Still sounds good. Hey, welcome back to the Real World Garage. Here we go. Okay, so let's get back to let's get back at it now that we've reset our maintenance monitor. Let's just kind of come out here under the hood. Take a minute. You've got dust and dirt and stuff that accumulates. The uh, I checked the air filter housing the last time. Um, we don't do any dirt roads or anything like that. We're all highway driving, so I'm not going to check it again this time. But something people neglect to think about, um, and can cause shortened life, battery life, is uh, clean the top of your battery. Just take an old rag and wipe it down. Just get the crud off of it and the dust and the dirt. It, uh, your battery, over time, can actually with uh, oil and dirt build up on top of the battery, well short, because you actually gain a low draw between the two poles on the battery and shorten the life of the battery. So just give it a little wipe down. We'll show it a little of it. Um, they make all kind of battery products out there for uh, maintaining your terminals. But you just take a little light oil. A lot of times that's all you need you can spray. Just a little, get a little spritz. Um, I don't see any corrosion building up on the battery. Let's get down here, wipe the overspray off. I don't see any corrosion around my terminals or anything like that. Everything is tight. Let's get my cover back on here. Snap it back down. I've accidentally shortened it out. Sure these are tight, everything looks good there. Down here to your hood light, give it a little spritz. Keep it operating okay. Can't really reach up in there, I need my straw. I can't reach up in there and hit my hood hinges. It's, that's not real critical. But, let's go ahead and around. You don't wanna take any door latches or spritz wipe off any excess if your wife doesn't get oil on her sunday clothes she would not be a happy camper you've got your door checked give it a little shot more hinges give them a little shot most any kind of lubricant is fine just want to get a little bit of a little spritz up in there because i see rain water and you folks travel up in the northern counties, not the counties, northern, northern part of the country, you can actually get to the uh, rear door hinges pretty easy by just opening the front door and shooting back. Gather up any overspray. Spritz. Take a look, make sure you get some on the door check. Hit the front side of these hinges. Work the door back and forth a couple of times. Alright. Let's, Let's do the do the trunk. Alright, she got the pivots. We'll hit them. Sure they're good. Well, you've also got a couple pivots here on your lift assist. Give them a little spritz. All right. Now, let's take a rag and wipe off the excess. Yeah, like the excess off the outside. Okay, let's talk about tires. Uh, that's part of doing good maintenance on your vehicle. So it's a good idea to know 
what the uh, DOT code says, the date code on your tire. There's a lot of videos out there that talk about this. But we'll just do a quick review. You'll find the number that says DOT, and you'll come down, and there'll be four numbers at the end of it. All right, those four numbers represent exactly what the date of the tire is. This tire was made six week, 2016. Um, most any tire anymore, um, regardless of how much tread you have left, when your tire gets around six or so years old, you need to seriously consider replacing it. Um, if you're just putting around town, you don't drive it out on the interstate, mm, you might be able to go seven, eight years as long as your tread depth okay. But for the most part, when your tire gets around six years old, you need to really seriously be looking at getting another set of tires. And I know you're gonna say, well, the tread depth is it's really good. The tires are in really good looking condition. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but you don't understand that the tire over time releases petroleum and um, the construction of the tire is beginning to degrade. Um, and for your, for your safety, you need to be uh, give that some consideration. Tires do break down over time. All right, another most important thing to keep in mind when you're with your tires is um, keep a tire pressure gauge in the in the door pocket of your vehicle. Okay. All right, let's, let's check the pressure on these tires. Um, when you have a season change, particularly when it goes when you go from the warm months into the cold months, we set on PSI. Let's see, can't see. Here we go. All right, let that settle. All right, we're down to 28 pounds in that tire. But we just recently went from 90 degrees days down to uh, we're having lows of 40 at night and highs on only about 70. So. It will affect your tire pressure. All right, so we know we're gonna have to add air to that one. Let's move around here. All right. All right, that one's at 31. at 32 and that one's at 31 okay so we're gonna have to see about adding a little air to these tires yeah um, so you're not sure what your tire pressures are supposed to be I can't remember what year they started doing this but almost all vehicles have their tire pressures right here in the door jam. A lot of older vehicles, they were it was right on the uh, glove box door. Uh, as you can see, front tires are 33 psi and rear tires are 33 psi, and your spare tire is 60 psi. So, actually, take the time to go check that spare tire. You don't know how many times. I've seen people on the side of the road trying to change their tire and they're unable to because the spare's flat. So we'll pause here and I'll go ahead and pull this out and we'll check it. Okay, it only took them a couple minutes to pull the tire out. Um, this tire, as you can see, is brand new. It has probably never been on the ground and was probably put, installed here at the factory and has never been checked. I would lay, I would bet money it has never been checked since it was installed in the vehicle. All right, so let's turn pressure gauge on. And let's see how much air pressure she's got. Would you look at that? This tire is rated for 60 PSI and it is sitting at 28 PSI. See, that goes to show you that I haven't checked this tire either. So, shame on me. We're going to break out our portable air pump. And uh, we'll get it top back off. Get it what to what it's supposed to be. Back over here where it's not so noisy. 
That's a uh, Stanley Fat Max. It is an auxiliary power air compressor and digital digital air compressor. Work light and jump pack. We bought, I guess last Christmas, paid like $50 for it. Got it at Sam's. Uh, it's been pretty handy to have on board. I mostly used it for the air compressor. But you set the uh, air compressor digitally and turn it on and it runs off of the internal battery. So, and it will shut itself off when it reaches the right pressure. And there we go. Snap our little lid back down. Also, while our tire is finishing filling up, I went ahead and wiped down some of the other covers and some of the other components. Just be careful around your electronics that you don't uh, break a uh, sensor or knock something unplugged accidentally. And there we go, our air compressor. When it gets close. Cheese 60 pounds, it shuts itself down. We got the spare remounted, got the jumper cables back in there, just as an emergency backup to the emergency backup. Uh, like I said, that provides all the power you need in an emergency. Yes, my tire pressure is 26.6. I think this pressure gauge is off just a shade. Let's turn it down. Whoop, too far. 33. My battery on my on this unit needs to be recharged. I think got about two bars left. See what my portable digital gauge says. Oh, 33 psi. Right on the money. Don't forget to reinstall your valve stem caps. One tire to go. Again, handy unit to have. Like I said, it does. It has a, an LED light. It's got four USB charge ports. It's got the compressor. It's got turn the battery. a battery status light. It tells you that the battery in this unit has got 12.5 volts remaining. Once you, when you have this unit hooked up to your vehicle, if you've jump started it, it will tell you, it will give you an alternator status and tell you if your alternator is charging or not charging. Um, it's been a handy little unit and it's good to have in the back of your vehicle. It has a, a 120 volt outlet right there. You need to plug it up and charge this unit. Take it out of your vehicle and charge it up about once a month so it's always on, ready to go and on standby. Um, I have been well pleased with this so far. And for $50, it's good to know that my wife's riding around. If she has a problem, she can uh, self-rescue. And the other benefit to having a unit like this is you, if you run across somebody who is asking for a jump start, you don't actually have to connect your vehicle to their vehicle. And if, ha if their vehicle has a problem or something gets hooked up wrong, you're not drawn into their problems. Um, you can hook this up, and if their vehicle starts, great. And if it doesn't, well, um, 
you know, they need to call a tow truck. But you want, like I said, you don't have to worry about compromising your vehicle to get their vehicle started. Okay, I brought the unit on over and hooked it up to uh, my extension cord and leave it in the garage overnight and uh, just let it charge. You can see that it gives you a charge status and a uh, voltage display while the unit is charging. When it re achieves its max capacity, it has automatic feature that shuts off the charging so you won't have to worry about overcharging it. Uh, just have to remember to put the unit back in your vehicle. Well guys, that's just another day in the real world garage. Uh, I hope this isn't too, ma too mundane, uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that like to uh, know how to maintenance their vehicles. They're just getting into it, and uh, it's just a basic overview, and uh, uh, a few things to do to keep your vehicle going um, and operating smoothly as it should. Uh, so uh, with that, We'll close out. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for coming to the Real World Garage. Got a little hustle when she needs to.